FSU on the campus of Florida State University and we're inside of Telegym and today is the Regional Science and Engineering Fair competition. This is the step before the students get to state. So they had their local school fair, science and engineering fair, and they competed in 13 different categories. And the top 16 students from the school move on to the regional fair, and they're competing for a slot for the state fair in uh, March down in Lakeland, Florida. So it's the state science and engineering fair. So, so as we go around and we judge the various projects, we're we're one, we're looking to, to make sure that kids are excited about science. We wanna encourage them to explore and, and really focus on, on developing scientific understanding kind of in their, their own way in these projects that really engage them. So we're looking for students that understand what they've done from a scientific, scientific perspective and also have done a really rigorous uh, collection of data and they understand the analysis that they've done and, and it's even great to, to see the students that are able to then connect their understanding of the concept they were investigating to kind of a, a bigger scientific idea and maybe something that's relevant to their personal life or just kind of society in general. So we really want to encourage understanding science and its applications uh, in various contexts. So anytime we can kind of draw that out of a student, uh, it's, it's usually a successful experience. Well, Mallory, tell me about your, your project and what you learned and what you were testing and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so um, I was Top testing if Coca-Cola would decompose certain types of food groups. And my hypothesis was that cheese would decompose out of the five food groups that Good I choose. Mm -hmm. um, each day I would measure how much the food weighed and I would then I would put it back in the container and wait for the next day to come. And the results were kind of all across the board, but my hypothesis was correct. And, and tell me about your setup again. So how did you, how did you figure out what to, to test and how to set it up? I had put them in, each one was in its own container. Mm -hmm. And um, this one shows the water that they mm -hmm. were in. And I had, whenever I was weighing them, I used a food scale and a cylinder that I could drain the Coca-Cola or water out of back into the container. So I, could measure them by themselves. Okay, and tell me now, you said that you had some in water and some in Coca-Cola. Why did you have the two different liquids? Um, well, the water was the base and the Coca-Cola was the actual thing I was testing. Okay. And I figured if I was testing the Coca-Cola, I should probably test what it did in water also. Okay, so maybe just kind of as a point of comparison? Yes. Something? Okay, excellent. Would you mind explaining to me what your graphs are showing me over here. Um, the final mass of the food items shows the mass at the end of the six days, how much they each measured out to be. And the change in mass is if they increased in mass, if they decreased in mass. It was Since the results were kind of all over the place, they were very different in range. All right, well, thank you very much for sharing your project. I appreciate it. So our, our last project, she had a, a grasp of what she was testing and, and she had some, some quality data to try and back up her results. So she was really trying to, to make some connections there with the data that she saw and the science that she's learned about acids and bases. So she did a, a really good job in trying to explain her project and what she learned. It was kind of nerve-wracking, like having all the judges come up and you just kind of tell them what you think. But after a couple of them came by, it was easier and easier. and. I got more comfortable and it was it started becoming better to talk to them more. Well, I mean, of course I hope I did well, but I think I tried my best and I put everything I have out there and there's nothing more I could give. Scott? Good. Good. Jonathan? Nice. Good to meet you, buddy. Um, tell me about your project quickly. Like, what did you, what'd you test and what did you find out? Okay, so my research question was, is the battery's temperature affect its performance? Mm -hmm. So my hypothesis was, if the battery's temperature is decreased, then the performance will decrease also, measured okay. by the room time of a remote controlled car. Hmm. So we would test the batteries in dry ice, ice, and room temperature. So at room temperature we got about 32 minutes, in ice we got about 25 minutes, and in dry ice we got 7 minutes. 
Okay, all right. So explain to me a little more the method that you used here to test the different temperatures on the battery. Put um, a battery pack with four energizer batteries in it um, down in a plastic bag and tie it off. Mm -hmm. And then we stick it, we put some dry ice in the bottom of a beaker, stick the battery pack on it and bury it in there. And then we let it sit for 15 minutes to get cold. And then we would just use the jumper tables to hook it up to um, a motor. Okay, all right. And now how did you measure those temperatures? How did you make sure that the batteries were getting down to zero degrees Use or a, negative? Um, laser thermometer. Mm, so okay. We shoot it on the ice and make sure that it's like exactly. Okay. All right. So so if you were gonna do this project again, Scott, what are some things that, that you might do differently or some other directions you might take? I might get a um, different car with a different motor in it with a different load and try to measure the load. Mm -hmm. um, we might also change the battery type. Mm -hmm. So we did a first like science fair kind of. Mm -hmm. So we changed the type of battery and the temperature, but then that was changing two things the teacher said. Mm -hmm. So we went on with that, and then we found that Energizer was the best and used it on the test. Okay, all right, that's good. So you did some kind of preliminary testing to, to make sure you were using the best product. I like that. All right, well, thank you, Scott, for sharing your project with me. I appreciate it. All right, have a good one. Uh, what I particularly liked about that project is that the student had kind of a, a real life application and aspect behind the project, seeing how temperature and maybe living up north in cold climates may impact uh, the use of electric vehicles. So he was kind of testing that idea uh, with his remote control car to, to make some comparisons. I, I think it's great that we can get young students to, to start thinking about kind of bigger and broader applications of science and how they interact and affect our everyday life. So, so that kind of project is, is something I really like to see. A few times I was a little bit scared because I was trying to come up with my thoughts of what to say. But later on in the day, it got a little bit easier because then I knew what to say and how to practice it and stuff. I think I did pretty good. So. Our team of judges spent some time earlier this morning. We had about 30 projects that uh, we've scored and, and ranked, and we've gone back now a second time so that we could kind of get a, a different look, a uh, different approach to some of the projects that we didn't get to see in the first go-around. So now we'll, we'll get our judging team back together and, and try and rally to, to decide which projects we think are, are the top projects uh, and that should be awarded for their efforts uh, this afternoon. Mm -hmm.